So the Hyper OS 1.0.4 global build is finally available for the Mi 8 all devices which includes Redmi Note 9 Pro, Pro Max, Poco M2 Pro and Redmi Note 10 Lite. So this is the telegram post of this ROM. This is Hyper OS version 1.0.4, UNC MIXM, Android 14 and the build date is 17th March and it's by it signs up. So today I will review this build of Hyper OS on my Redmi Note 9 Pro. So let's get started. So starting with the settings, let me show you the about info of this build. Here you can see the Hyper OS logo and the device name is Redmi Note 9S because it's a Redmi Note 9 Pro and the storage variant is in my case 64 GB and the OS version is 1.0.4. The Android version is Android 14 and when I do this there is no haptic feedback sadly. Then the Android security update is of 1st January 2024 which is not too old. Then if I go to detail info and specs you can see I have extended the RAM to 4 GB. I don't know how effective is this but there is an option to do that then here is cpu info however 720g is not clocked at 3 gigahertz this rom is ported from redmi k30 ultra that ho that's why it shows 3 gigahertz however moving next to the android version you can see it's android 14 and the kernel that is used in this build is the kinesis extreme v4 which supports the kernel issue and yes i am using the kernel issue without any issue and even using modules like Jigisk and Play Integrity Fix and talking about the safety net the safety net was not present out of the box so I installed these two modules to get the safety net and now the safety net is working and even the Play Store certification is there now talking about the status if I go to status you can see the UI is same as MIUI and like MIUI you get the system app updater Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, mobile networks etc and in more connectivity options, we get the VPN, private DNS, portable hotspot, MiShare, printing, cast, wireless displays, etc. And we also get the quick share, which is working fine, you can see. And in lock screen, we get the slip of the lock screen, then the glance for MI, then the pocket mode, and launch camera shortcut. Now in notification and status bar, we get the lock screen, floating notification, and badges. In app notifications, you can customize the notification for each and every application then here is an option to edit the carrier name of your sim card then we get the battery indicator the height notch option notch for individual apps etc and you get both two control center styles like the old version which we used to get in miui and the new version which is this one from right side it looks like this and from left side we get the notifications and this look is not like me ui it's quite different because it's hyper os global build there will be a significant amount of difference from me ui then we get the smart device controls now in home screen we get these options and we have the system navigation right here you can customize the navigation mode and you can also use the button option now we have arrange items in recents so you get two styles the vertical and horizontal and currently it is set on the horizontal and it looks quite immersive because we don't get those extra options that we get in MIUI then in display and brightness we have the sunlight mode the auto brightness then the advanced textures reading mode AI image engine so in AI image engine we get some extra options which is additional in hyper OS so you get the super resolution which is useful for enhancing videos and images then we have the AI image enhancement and AI HDR enhancement and we get the MEMC which smoothens the video playback in your device and when I turn this on it automatically gets turned off I don't know why now moving to the next option we have reduce animations option then the font and the font settings now in sound and touch we get this UI where you can customize the notification ringtone and if I go to notification we get the theme store agreement if you agree you will be redirected to the theme store and one thing i forgot to talk about is the show connection speed in the notification and status bar now in sound and touch we get the silent mode silent media in silent mode do not disturb by way for calls etc and in sound effects we get the xiaomi sound and the preset and in preset we have four options and you can customize the headphone remote buttons 
and you can also assign the buttons when you are connected to the headphone or neck band or any bluetooth device now if i click on wallpaper it redirects me to here which is basically the theme store and in lock style you can customize the lock style and we get all these mi ui classic lock styles and these and we have this which is the mostly hyped lock screen and you can set any of these and currently i have set this in the lock screen and you can see it looks quite dope then we get the icon customization always on display font and notification effects so even this rom is for mid only devices but still we get the always on display so if you turn on the always on display you will get all these options and specifically this aod is used in redmi note 10 pro so this is quite similar and in aod we have multiple options not only 10 seconds you can set this for always and set this to smart but i will prefer to use the 10 seconds because it's an lcd display not oled or amoled and in fonts it redirects us to the font settings only not the theme store now if i click on themes it redirects me to theme store again then in fingerprint face data and lock screen lock we get these options and all the rest of options that we get in miui like safety and emergency security and privacy etc and in apps you get this app controls like system app settings the manage apps and the other options and we definitely get the app lock in this build which is working fine you can see and in additional settings we get these options and we get the led light which is useful because we have a notification light in the mute all devices so this is it about the features now talking about the camera we get the leica camera in this rom and in leica camera we only get 4k 30 fps and full hd 60 fps video recording and it also supports 720p and in 60 fps we get a little bit of stabilization i think but in 30 fps the stabilization is just like mi ui and talking about the pro mode we don't get the option to choose the macro sensor now in more we get the 48 mp mode which is working fine you can see the detailing is absolutely fine and we get the night mode with the leica camera we get the mi ui gallery and talking of stock applications we we get a bunch of stock applications even some bloatwares you can see in this video some bloatwares are installed like this one and this one and guys this hyper os build is not a chinese port this is global variant and this is ported from redmi k30 ultra and it was recognized redmi k30 ultra in the telegram as you can see in the screenshot now talking about some important options starting with the safety net as i told you earlier we don't get the safety net but we get kernel issue so we can flash safety net modules to get the safety net and for dialer we get the mi ui dialer so if i call someone you can see we get the mi ui dialer and we get the call recording but i think the call recording is not working because it shows only waiting now talking about the google photos patch as you can see in this screenshot it shows this pixel can back up unlimited photos at no charge that means you can back up unlimited photos in this rom now talking about the game space we don't get any dedicated app for game space so if i search on the settings about game it will show like this and we actually get the game space if i open the bgmi you can see we have the game turbo so if i swipe from this side you can see we get this game space which is the game turbo and in this game space we get the voice changer which is working perfectly fine i have tested it and we get some extra options like brightness control clear memory cast etc and with the game space you can use any applications also like whatsapp telegram etc and you can customize the current mode and you can set it to performance which will boost the gaming performance however the gaming performance is really good i was playing i was testing the bgmi in smooth plus 60 fps and the performance was really good the frame rates were hovering around 55 to 59 which is a great frame rate 
considering a meme UI and let me show you one noticeable feature we get the smooth extreme and HDR extreme in this build so for gaming you can definitely try this hyper OS because the gaming performance is also good in this build so I will keep this on smooth extreme and the extreme HDR is not supported and from the game turbo we get an option called site so you can also customize the site and customize the color of it so that is also a useful option for gamers so the ultra HDR mode is not showing any error that means the ultra HD will be supported so we will talk about the gaming performance later in this video so keep watching the video till the end now talking about the benchmark scores let's start with the untoed benchmark so i basically set the battery performance to performance and i got this much score you can see the score is really good it's 3,90,198 and i will remind you again that this is a hyper os build for our me at all devices so considering that the performance is really good now talking about the throttling test let me show you a screenshot so i recently took this screenshot the test was performed for 7 minutes and you can see the graph is really stable and there was no cp thermal throttling so from this you can judge the performance of this rom so the performance is really good but there is one problem in this rom which is not a major problem though but still the scrolling is sometimes jittery you face scrolling lag while using this rom so that's one and only drawback of this rom which i faced now talking about the installation for installation you can head over to the post as mentioned in the post you have to use this recovery for installing this rom so following this link you will be able to download the recovery file just flash it from the custom recovery that you are using and you will be able to flash this build and the flashing is not complex at all just reboot into recovery and use an external storage and wipe Dalby cache data but that is not mandatory and just flash the build and after flashing the build make sure to format data and make sure to use this recovery which is mentioned in the post and by following this link you will be able to download the recovery image and talking about the battery backup of this build the battery backup was really good I did a light usage on this ROM and I got 2.5 days of battery backup which is a great battery backup I think. So this is it for this video. If you liked this video make sure to subscribe to this channel. I make custom ROM related topics for me at all devices, realme rm 685 devices and soon I will make videos about Redmi Note 10 Pro and Redmi Note 10 Pro Max which is the sweet and sweet in devices. So make sure to subscribe to this channel. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.